Sacrifice, yeah. I pray every night cause I live one hell of a life. One hell of a life, yeah. Two shows back to back, one hell of a night, too. I pick up the chicken, then I'm right back on the flight. My dog still on lockdown and he just sent me a kite. Okay. One hell of a life, uh huh. Yeah, grew up watching my big cousin and cooking up white. White, fish did a sweep in the whole neighborhood, got indicted. Got a old school, but it look like a new. Having nothing uh, to end the buy shopping. Uh, she got fake tears, she love to walk around topless. Uh, Independence Day, we pull up and get it poppin'. Pop. No time for cheap talking. Uh, no time for cheap talking. Uh, you know my teeth flawless, baby. I'ma keep ballin'. And if you see me driving, you need best believe I'm Welcome ballin'. back to another video. And if you look right here to the left of me, there's a big warehouse. And they have a few shipping devices, semis, whatever you want to call them. And we are picking something up. So we have my car trailer with us, and we're gonna go pick up a very big oh, a very big pallet. I was gonna say, but that that's definitely the uh, the, the wrong date. So it's like a five second service break. Let's hope that. Oh my god, I can't back up these little tiny trailers. Anyways, let's hope that we can get inside here because I have literally five ten minutes to spare. I'm picking up my package and then we're headed to one of my friend's houses who used to live up here and he's actually up here visiting family and you guys will probably know who that is I think he goes by like the black Jesus of trucks anyways let's get in here and get this package picked up oh yeah let's get the package picked up and I read the sign it said no semis in here but we don't follow rules so to picking up something very very good for the dually they want me to hit this little green button but they can't see me on the camera oh look at that they just know i'm here i come here about every other day to pick up a package and this time i pick up the same thing i picked up last time so i should be pretty dialed now to find door 34 and i should have brought the goose neck because this loading dock they probably won't be able to drop down 10 feet and get onto my car trailer but we should be okay so six seven eight nine ten Okay, yeah, we got a little bit of drive to go. So, let's see here. 26, 30, 34. Oh, you get oh, the back of them. Oh, perfect. Look at that. And they're ready to go. And there's a loading ramp. That's even better. Just like that, we have a trailer full of boxes. I locked the truck. I oh, forgot. Oh, we made it out of poverty. We got the. Uh, I got the same one. The, the same power. 2012 key. Yeah. You got a little two or one? <laughs> huh? You got a little two? Oh, we got better. We all can't be fucking Gabe's filmer. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Maybe. That's fucking heavy. <laughs> what the fuck's in this thing? Fucking wheels? Scrims. Scrims. Watch the other side don't fall out. <laughs> what we got? They spin. Yeah. She. Yeah. She. What the fuck are these for? Never know. What? <laughs> the world may never know. What are these for? Are these for this? They're they're wheels. They are wheels. No, they're for the for the second gen, ain't they? Picnic table. Picnic table <laughs> wheels. I actually sold that. Today. We only have eight of them. I got dualies in the front. Who 
just said something like that? You said something like that. Or put dual, oh, can you put dually wheels in the front? Yes, yeah, I'll say. Four in the front? Put you doing two, that? You could, you could do it, theoretically. Theoretically, yeah. your wheel could fall off on the highway. You could fucking die. <laughs> or the hub could catch on fire. These are sick, though. I like these. They spin. That's fucking ball. Shout out to CIS. Shout out to Cal's Customs. <laughs> this isn't cowboy. This thing's a pile of garbage. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it is cowboy. It's black and it's the right color now. It, it was the wrong color when I got it, so we, we had to change it. What's it got now? Oh, oh, it's got peanut butter interior. Peanut butter inside, outside, peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> So I pulled up a little bit further forward because I figured that I'd be able to back the trailer in the driveway, but the driveway is only like one mega cab and a smart car long, so we couldn't do that. Anyways, the moment you guys have all been waiting for, I'm sorry about the rain because, you know, we're in Florida, as you guys seen from the beginning of the video, and it rains every five minutes in Florida. I've been waiting about all day long to film this part of the video. So here we have it. My massive second gen dually that I'm gonna call Flippa because Young Dolph, like he was known as Flippa, and I love Young Dolph, and the color flip flops a lot. So come check it out. Let's just stand up onto our 40 foot gooseneck that I halfway power washed earlier, and then got sick of it because the power washer was throwing the wood off of the trailer, like physically. And yeah. So to start off, we have a, uh, a lot going on down here. So obviously it's four links on about a 30, a, uh, no, it's on about a 40 inch lift, if not more. I haven't really measured it yet, but we have drone and slotted rotors. We got all two inch steering, track bar, sway bars. You guys may be wondering why that drive shaft isn't inside of there. So if you come down here and you look, right here is not a 1410 U joint up there is a 1410 u joint so before you guys say oh he built a truck that doesn't have a front drive shaft why don't you guys just wait because this truck is so easy to put a drive shaft in i just physically can't let myself put a small u joint right there and a big u joint up top so with that being said the rear shaft right now is steel and i want to upgrade it to like a five inch aluminum shaft but i got to get custom like slip yokes made for it yada yada the drive shaft place had a bunch of stuff i really wasn't listening they just said that it's not cheap. So when we get Hollywood putting on the five inch aluminum drive shafts and then getting that yoke swapped out. But for the time being, it is missing the drive shaft, so it's Bluetooth. Anyways, drill the slotted rotors, everything on the axles are brand new. It, it's filthy. I mean, you can kind of see the wood on it from the trailer right there that I power washed. Anyways, the beautiful Kingsby oil pan, that thing is definitely wonderful. So yes. We have these massive 53 inch tires, and if we jump back off of the half-ass power wash trailer, you guys will see I have Ford's wheels for the first time. It's kind of like a moment to remember and don't mind the missing lug nut. It's inside the truck, I just didn't put it on because I cracked the socket, but the new socket's now here. Shout out to TIS for getting us hooked up with these wheels. They came very fast, so if you guys need any wheels, hit up TIS. I really can't say much about the tires because they're off of like agriculture, is that how you say it? Agriculture? <laughs> an agriculture piece of farm equipment. And I don't think they're street rated. Let's see if there's a stamping on them. That says like, don't go over a certain speed. I know my old 53 said, don't exceed 45 miles per hour. I was like, yeah. oh my God. Made in Israel. <laughs> Damn, so these things came from overseas. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Anyways, you guys haven't seen it yet, but I decided to change all the overlays on it. And actually Calvin from Kellis Customs, he talked me into putting all polished overlays on it. So. I had all the face plates cut for the truck, and they were just raw steel. I had a powder coated black, and then Thomas was going to paint them body color. Last minute, we decided that we we're going to put polished wheels on it, and I was like, okay, well, now I'll do all the polished drive shafts and steering and sway bars, this and that. And I was like, okay, I'll do the polished overlays. And that took a long time to get those cut, and there's a lot of upkeep on them, but now that everything has literally four inches of water on it, the wheels will need repolished. And then after I got all that polished stuff on, I was like, you know what? We need a King Speed oil pan. So we got the aluminum billet custom oil pan for the truck. 
And obviously the billet clamps for the reservoirs up top. We had to do that. We come back here. We got that massive, nasty second gen fuel tank on it and powder coated straps. I should have chromed the straps. That probably would look cool. We can stand underneath the truck. So if you look inside here, most people paint the whole entire bumper body color. This time I decided that I was going to powder coat the whole bumper black and body color just the outside of it, which you guys can see looks phenomenal. Obviously we got the light pods, Amazon specials because they had the black insides on the pods. So that was kind of cool. The license plate is not existent because why put the plate on the truck? I don't want to scratch up the paint. So we didn't put that on yet. This is honestly my favorite part of the truck because when you come back here and you look down to where you would think would be the transmission, you don't have a transmission in sight. You have an SES drop box. And it gets even better when we come about, let's go, let's say 15 feet up. We're like 50 feet away. The video doesn't do justice on how good the SES drop box looks inside there, but in my opinion, on my side of the camera, that just sets off the whole truck, especially at nighttime. And then when the rock lights are installed on it, it's going to be literally insane. So back to the truck, you guys may be wondering why the sway bar links are so long. Well, they, uh, they literally are four feet long. And yeah, we had to swap out the coil over springs because I have the other springs in the back seat and the truck nosedived. And obviously we can't be like this. We can't be like this. We were like this one time in a ditch with Gabe's truck on the back. We want it to sit like this, not like this. So yeah, level. Now the truck sits level. Um, braided brake lines, of course. They are F-350 axles. So we had to figure out how to get the speed sensor to work. Drill the slider rotors back here. We got my name cut into the overlay up here. And we are down here in Florida for Florida truck meet. So that'll be the first time this truck is actually revealed. I haven't really had anybody see it besides a couple of friends back home. And if you might have seen it in the process of going from Chicago to Fort Myers, back to Chicago, then back to Fort Myers, and back to Orlando. We went like everywhere with this thing on the trailer. I haven't driven this truck, but maybe 0.1 miles. I've owned the truck for about four years now. So if you are new to the channel, this truck has been in my ownership since January. 2020. It started out as LP24 V's library dually. That's where the frame came from and I was going to lift that truck. About four years ago I built a lift for it. I got tired of the lift because it wasn't big enough and then I took it all apart. I built the lift again and it still wasn't big enough and then I sat behind my shop for about a solid year. Logan actually sold me these bumpers and I bought those. I was like oh you know what I'm gonna lift the truck again. So I built another lift kit for it and put it on my lift and it sat for about seven months. So finally I found another roller that I got. I put the body onto a different roller. I brought the body down to Thomas's, T. King Cummins in Fort Myers, I think July of 2023. He took his time on the paint job. We got that back, I think, the end of last year, maybe beginning of this year. I wasn't really in a rush then, but I just wanted to make it to the show, which is in April, obviously. So that's kind of a little backstory on the truck, but we now have it, I would say, 99.9% .9 complete. It still needs the interior done, the sound system, and then a couple of small pieces like the front drive shaft, and a few little tiny odds and ends that I can think of. Maybe not. I think this stuff's all all done. Yeah, that's that's all done down here. So, look at these tail lights. They are aftermarket tail lights, and I told Thomas to do something cool with them. I didn't know that we were going to be smoking the entire tail light, but they do look pretty slick. It's not even think a taillight's in existence there because why why would you need your taillights? But let me turn them on real quick. Like, oh my god, you can actually see the lights. I can almost reach it. Don't worry, the, the door handle got ripped off. One of my buddies back home who's about 250 pounds, seven feet tall, and a literal gym freak might have thought it was like a 250 pound dumbbell when he grabbed the door handle. Besides the point. The tail lights, I don't know how I feel about them. Drop a comment on what you guys think. I might have Braxton B-Rax 12V build me a custom set of them. We were talking about it before the show, but I was like in a little bit of a time crunch to get them done. But that's what we came up with. I don't I don't know how I feel about them. That's the only thing I don't know if I like about the truck. Everything else is literally my dream. I built the same exact truck about three years ago, and then I completely fell in love with it. I wanted to lift that truck to the moon, and then unfortunately one of my buddies 
decided to come and give me a stupid amount of cash for it and bought it, then wrecked it, then I got it back, and then I sold it, and then yada yada, whole nightmare. But the only thing different from this body, I would say, from the last one I built, was I didn't have the front bumper on it, and I think that was about it. It had boost auto part mirrors, it had this rear bumper on it, and it didn't have the front bumper. So, if we come up here, this is obviously the focal point of the truck, and Thomas went ahead and did an amazing job on building those headlights. If you look up close, they have a shroud inside of there with like an HID bulb inside of there. I don't know what that piece in the middle is called, like a, um, yeah, something like a magnifying glass. I don't know. She used to headlight from here to like Miami and we're in Orlando. Besides the point, when you hit the turn signal, the white light turns into, I think, yellow. Then you shut it off, obviously, the switchbacks. I go back to the white color. Brand new sport grill. The front bumper obviously has the black pods like the rear. Light bar in the middle. I don't know if I'm going to put on monster hooks yet. I've been thinking about it like every day. I don't know if I want to put a hook inside here and let it just smack around because, you know, we do bob through a lot of cornfields and ditches and off-road parts of this thing, so we might not put those on. But yeah, this front bumper took me about, you know, Four years to acquire from Logan. Logan, if you're watching this video, uh, I hate you for that because I wanted this bumper since day one. I mean, it, it, it's a monster truck. You know what I didn't think of? That the hood stack is wide open. It's been downpouring. So I might as well start the truck, see if it blows out water. <laughs> Surprisingly, we didn't blow water everywhere. It's kind of nice because I don't want to sit there and clean all the soot off my truck. But if you guys are new to the channel, we might as well show you guys the engine really quick because that is honestly, in my opinion, my favorite part about the truck. So if you look over there, we have triple turbos with a very, very, very beautiful hood stack. We went ahead and painted the whole entire motor. There's a lot of powder coat on it. Shout out to Powder Coating Creations out in uh, Illinois. Kyle took care of everything on the engine. Brand new silicone intercooler boots because I bought a set of stock ones to replace the ones that were on it. And I was like, you know what? The stock ones just aren't it. Obviously new batteries, everything underneath here is brand new. You guys get the point. Ready? Yeah. So yeah, drop a comment below on what you guys think I should do with the tail lights. I don't, I don't know. Like I have very, very different mixed feelings about them. I think a clear tail light with the insides painted, kind of like the headlight with like some blue accents, maybe blue light pods inside there. Might look a lot better, but this is the moment you guys all have been waiting for. Now we can get back to the house after Florida truck meet, that is. And maybe put it in a pond, jump it. We could probably try driving it in the Grand Canyon. Or like the Rock Quarries or Badlands, the off-road park. One of the three different things. So with that being said, it's going to end today's video. I appreciate you guys for the cooperation and the patience on how long it took me to build this truck. But I wanted to build it exactly how I wanted it. And obviously doing something to this caliber isn't just an overnight process. So it's complete. And I think the next video should be pretty gnarly. We'll see you guys probably next Sunday after Florida truck meet.